Recording live from Tallgrass Tap House on Points in Manhattan, Kansas. This is the KSO Show. Matt Hall joined by Grant Flanders. Just me and Flando right now. It has been a long time. Flanders, we used to always say, it's been a while since a you and me podcast, but it really, really has yeah. been. We always have people with us. We've John Kurtz may lately. show up tonight. He's a busy man. I don't know if he will or won't. Nope. Um, if he does, great. If he doesn't, great. We'll we'll survive either way. But it is just you and me right yeah, now. Yeah, we've been spoiled with you know KSU fan Kurtz coming on every so often. I mean, Brat last Taylor Brat, that right. was huge. I mean, just you know, Mason came a couple weeks yep. ago. A lot, a lot of like Nelson, D Y, everyone. Your so, mother? My mom was. <laughs> my mom was Did here. she speak on it? I don't think she spoke. You're right. So, but, but she, she was, was here. Happy but she was here. here. She was. Yeah. Yes. So here's the thing, uh, Flando. You sound. Terrible. I, I feel like I do probably. You may, you have since we started recording though. You have turned on a radio a radio That's voice. Good. You still sound rough, but like forty seconds ago, like we thought you were gonna die. <laughs> now I think maybe you're faking it. So I'm not sure. The point is though. So I'm gonna host. It. I'll let you host this thing because you know the analyst side talks way more. Uh-huh. But I gotta ask one question before I give it over to you. I didn't go to Allen yeah. Tuesday night. You and Logan went there to do photo and video for us. We're there with Mason, right? Yeah. Uh, from K Man. Mason was up there. So the question's obvious. Just walk me through your experience of that, yeah. what it felt like in that building, just the emotion of it, just what it was like to be you and what you experienced during that fight so, in Lawrence. funny, Logan and I sitting up in the up nosebleeds yep. together. About, you know, minute 30 left in the game. Logan's like, you know, we don't need to. Let's go down to the media room now. I'm like, of course. I would have done. Let's do it. So, yeah, we, we go down to the media room. We hear some some commotion as we're going down. Uh-huh. We get to the media room on the TV. The brawl's you see it. broken out. We see yeah. it. a great view of it. Better view <laughs> than we would have saw a pot. Right. So honestly, it worked out. I mean, because yeah. we got to see you know James Love flying in there, D'Souza standing right. over Dejuan, and the whole the whole commotion. I mean, right. it, and, it, it was a wild time. And then when, for the pressers, was it self first then Weber or the opposite? Was Weber, it Weber? Yep, Weber then self. Weber then self. Right. How did just, I, I've seen their words? I've read their words. What did you feel like when they walked in the room? How were those guys doing? Oof. I mean, both very stern. Like yeah. especially you know Weber. Like when, I mean, after losses in general, he's usually you know comes in with a straight face, ready to talk. And yeah, he wasn't going to take any bull crap from right. anyone. And. Uh, but he also wasn't ready to just comment exactly what he saw because he didn't see much because it was so much going on right. you know, at the moment. Right. But, you know, I think he handled himself well. Another instance I'm just going to cut into yeah. where people, you know, have to take stuff so, so literally. You know, when he says he didn't see it, uh, he doesn't mean he's not aware or didn't see a fight. It's lazy short term for I didn't see all the details. I'm not going to talk yeah, about exactly. it. He, Bruce Weber, of course, saw what happened. Yes, he saw right. it. I think, and that's not anything yeah. you said wrong. I'm just clearing that up. You know, and he, I think, he, I think right. truly his back was turned at first to the right. initial part of it, which was D'Souza standing over and maybe a, a, a Sloan and, and Love coming in. But, yeah, after that he turned on and obviously saw a huge bulk of people. I mean, Self ran in there too yep. and tried to break it up, get D'Souza out of there. And uh, yeah, and then Self, I think, handled himself really well too after the, the the game. I mean, both both coaches did did well at the podium. I do want to ask you briefly again before we flip this over to you running this show, your thoughts on the penalties? I mean, twelve games for Sylvia De Sosa, two for David McCormick, eight for James Love, three for Antonio De Gordon, none for Marcus Scarrett, none for guys you know like David Sloan or Levi Stockard. You could have wondered about. Just general thoughts on those numbers. Well, I guess this. What was your reaction when you first saw him? Your first honest gut reaction to those numbers? I think D'Souza, I think I saw Vital say it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, he should be done for the year. And I agree. I, I agree. I yeah. think what he did was the worst out of anyone in the whole building. I mean, grabbing the chair, that took it to a whole other level. Right. It's kind of funny. No, grabbing the chair, we noticed re-watching it. Uh, you, you know that Mercury photographer that wears the hat everywhere? Uh-huh, uh-huh. He actually, right when D'Souza grabbed it, yeah. tried to grab it from D'Souza's yeah. hand and then yeah. actually slowed him down from using it as a weapon. Yeah. And so that, that that was interesting to see. But yeah, back to, I think D'Souza should be done for the year. Yeah. James Love probably close to done for the year too with how yeah. he came in swinging. Right. Um, and then I think McCormick should have had more than Antonio Gordon for sure. I think too. Stopping on guys. I mean, two games. I think he should have like Ten games, maybe than Antonio. Yeah. Uh, you know, three is fine for me. I guess you know he did come in as a, yeah. and not surprisingly, we know him his fire he has, no doubt. And uh, you know, protecting his guys. But as far as I'm concerned, I do think they were a little light on pretty much all of them, besides maybe Antonio's. 
I feel almost exactly the same. I would have given De Sosa the season. They basically did, but I mean, he'll be back in time for the tournament if you know they choose to use him. David McCormick, I think, is the trickiest one. And I said on, I think it was on KSO today yesterday, he will be the penalty that's going to upset one of the fan bases, either K-State or KU, because he's either going to get 10 games or more because they're going to have video of him literally stomping on a player mm -hmm. and real evidence of it, or they're going to say they don't, which I will say I – I wasn't there, so I shouldn't comment on what I saw because I wasn't there. I've only seen the videos like everybody else. I haven't seen a video where I see his foot physically contacting James Love. I'm also smart enough to watch the video and yeah. see what's happening down there and understand that he – and that's why he's suspended because they know what was happening down there. But I think the fact that maybe I don't – I haven't seen actual – confirmation of a, you know of yeah. a stomping there that's probably what saved it but i thought it should have been higher i thought james loves would have been a little lower and maybe i've been naive and biased on his because to me as i watch all the replays of it yes he came off the bench and threw a bunch of punches that's probably all it takes yeah. to get a, a large suspension <laughs> i guess what i thought it might be less was as i saw it i watched him come off the bench but i didn't see him come off the bench until yeah. sylvia de sosta yeah. had landed a punch on david sloan's head to me at that point I don't think throwing punches is as big of a deal when somebody else has already done it and landed uh -huh. a punch on your teammate's head. But I get it. I thought Antonio Gordon's might be higher because yeah. I actually think he's the one. I'm with you. I think Sylvia DeSosta, if you're looking for a blame, which doesn't matter, that's why I'm blaming for instigating oh, this yeah. for the standing over mm -hmm. of Dejuan Gordon. But I think the person who turned it from a argument to a fight is probably Antonio Gordon, in yeah. my opinion, because that two-hand shove to the chest, I thought was pretty physical. Yeah. And again, if a K-State guy was going to do it, it was going to be him. So I'm not blaming Antonio Gordon because, again, that's still just guys pushing and shoving. That's still all that is. That's not throwing punches and grabbing a weapon. So I'm not blaming Antonio Gordon for what it escalated to. But I thought he may have, to me, fired the first shot that said, this is now a fight. Yep. So I thought his could be higher. Yeah. Um, but overall, not much for problems with them. And we're going to move forward from it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's in the past. I think it's time to start looking into the future of K-State this season and, and beyond beyond that fight. Well, Mike Wobon, I mean, someone put it on our uh, our board from Trim Goema mm -hmm. from Twitter, had the video of PTI, Mike Wobon, and Tony Kornheiser talking about the incident. And he said basically what you said, Sylvia DeSouza, he started it. Right. Give him the punishment, done for the season or whatever it is, no one else gets punished. I but, would I, I would have understood that. Yeah. I know it would have seemed hypocritical and broke a lot of rules. But I think everybody else you can kind of point at and say, well, James Love did this because of this, right? Uh, Antonio Gordon did this because of this. Even David, you know, David McCormick, Marcus Garrett, they did do this because James Love they saw throwing punches. Everybody else you can more or less say they did this because of this. Sylvia de Sosa stood over a man for no reason for three seconds. And then when nobody else was considering grabbing a weapon, <laughs> and was just pushing and shoving, and a couple guys in DeSosa and Lover throwing punches. Right. He grabs a weapon. Like, that's why I would have said if they had just said DeSosa out for the season, both programs reprimanded for having poor sportsmanship, move on. I could have accepted that, too. So that is it. That is what it is. It is what it is. But, yep, I think it is time to move on, you know, talk about the season that we have moving forward and what they've accomplished so far during the season. And so, yeah, I mean, first talk about what you thought of the, the actual game, what you saw um, on TV of, of well, the KU yeah, I mean, exactly. I watched it on TV, and I don't want to immediately, you know, not answer the question you asked me. But we haven't had a show since the West yeah. Virginia game either. Yeah, so, that too. Yeah. So I mean, if we're looking at the basketball that. over the uh -huh. last week, we'll start with Tuesday. What you asked about? Uh, they got beat by a really good basketball team on the road in a really tough environment. You were there. You experienced it. You know, I think it was seven seven in the first under timeout. Then by the time we got to about ten minutes left, it's twenty six yep. nine KU. 17-point margin, the game is over right there. From that point on, the teams play a relatively even game. If you're going to be very specific about it, KU won by four from that mm -hmm. point on. I know K-State got down by as much as 24, I believe, then cut it down to 11 at one point when Dejuan, excuse me, David Sloan got kind of hot. So the point is that the basketball game, they played even a, a, a stretch where KU hammered K-State. And it wouldn't have been an even game otherwise. If KU didn't have such a big advantage, I'm sure they would have played yep. more uh, with a lot more intensity in those final 30 minutes. So not a, not a great performance. Best team they played all year on the road got hammered by them. But you got to look at it, I think, as a week or as a two-game stretch, uh -huh. right? And on Saturday, they played the number four Ken Palm team in the country, number 12 in the polls, and beat the tar out of them. It yeah. was 84-68 over West Virginia in a game that they were up 17 at halftime. It did get down to six at one point in the second half because the officials swallowed their whistles. Once they started calling fouls again, K-State ran it back out to 20. So, you know, they played two great teams in the last week. They went one and one. They had a successful week on the basketball court. And losing to KU is never good. But if you're going to play number, you know, number 12 and number three as K-State and go one and one, that's a successful oh, week. Absolutely. 
the fight is what we're going to remember from that week. But a basketball week, it was relatively good. And now you head out of conference for a game to kind of test yourself against a different kind of team. Yeah, an Alabama team heading to Tuscaloosa this week. Right. And it should be a challenge. I mean, Alabama has been uh, up and down as well. Right. Delight K-State in the SEC, but talk about the importance to that one. I think it's very important. I mean, this is let's not feed you guys lines you, in the, or ladies' lines that you're listening to this. Like, this K-State's not going to the NCAA tournament barring winning the Big 12 tournament. Or, yeah. you know, a completely different season. So when I say – well, my point is when I talk about a good non-conference win, I'm not talking about it in those those frames mm-hmm. because K-State needs more than a good non-conference win, you know, to get an yeah. easily tournament conversation. But I still think there's value in that and saying, okay, now we've gone out of league, you know, and we've beat Alabama. Hey, we beat Tulsa, who just beat Memphis by 40 the other night. We can, look, we can hang our hat on those things. And then if we can string together a league season – you know, this isn't what you should be excited or cheer for, but maybe you're six and twelve, seven and eleven. All of a sudden, it feels much different than a four and fourteen yep. league season with no good out of league wins. So I think there's value in that. And then Alabama themselves, I think I think they're pretty good. I mean, you could look. It's easy to look at their schedule and, and go either way. They've won three straight. One of those was a, I think a sixteen point win over then number four Auburn. You know, so that's a good win for them. There are only two losses in SEC play. They're four and two in the SEC. A nine point a nine point loss at Kentucky and a double overtime loss at Florida. So they've been pretty good. They've won eight of their last ten overall. The loss that really gives you pause for them if you're comparing them to K State is they played Iowa State non conference got blown out. Mm-hmm. I believe at home one hundred four eighty nine to Iowa State. So that makes you think, hey, maybe this Bama team's beatable. But since then, they've been really, really good. So my point is, um, this would be, you know, if how good of a win would it be? Winning at Tuscaloosa, probably the second best win of the year behind yeah. just West Virginia. So that's how big of a challenge I think it is and the opportunity K-State has in front of itself to go make some noise outside of the league and help the Big 12, you know, in this Big 12 SEC challenge. So, yeah, I mean, you talked about it. It's going to be tough for K-State to ever try to make a tournament. Even an NIT tournament could I be agree. a tough bid. But, yeah, you got to play competitive because these young guys need the experience, and going forward, it's good for the future, right? Right, and it's another tough stretch coming up. I don't have it pulled up right in front of me. You correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but I want to say they've got Oklahoma at That's home. Right. Then you've got a trip to West Virginia, which That's I'm sure right. they will be a little bit fired up. And then I want to say Baylor at home, who's the number one yep. team in the country right now. Yep. So, I mean, that's tough. You know, I mean, this it doesn't get a lot easier. Oklahoma's not very good, <laughs> and that's at home. But that's a tough team that's already beat you. But the point is, this is a stretch where maybe one and three is good enough. Two and two yeah. again would be great. If K-State could win at Alabama and then beat Oklahoma and go two and two, it's still not leading to the tournament. But there will be a time when the schedule does turn around. You yep. know, when they're playing, I know they lost to TCU at home already, but they'll get TCU again. They get Oklahoma State, who's been bad twice. They get Iowa State, who's been bad twice. They get Texas at home still, you know. Um, there are going to be winnable games on the schedule down the stretch. And if K-State can just get a couple here in this next four games, or even one, to be quite honest, they still have a chance to build a slight amount of momentum into an easier finishing Funny, stretch. all those teams you mentioned are all bunched up after this stretch. Yeah. Uh, you have, after the Baylor game, you have Kansas State going to Iowa State. Yep. Then Oklahoma State at home. Yep. To, uh, TCU in Fort Worth, and yep. then at Texas Tech, a tough matchup, tough game, yeah. and then Texas at home. Right, so. but that's five, that's five games. We're four of them. Yep. You, you can honestly tell yourself, hey, we're as good as that team or close. Home and road could be the difference. Yeah, it should start getting a little bit easier yep. after that stretch. No doubt. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, do you want to talk some recruiting? I think we should. I'll turn yeah. and just ask you something. Yep. I mean, so Donovan Williams, who wrote an update yep. on four-star kid from Lincoln, Nebraska, who was in last week, saw that West Virginia game. If you don't mind, give it, don't give it all away, uh-huh. but give me a couple of the thoughts he shared with you or where you think his recruitment is. And then it sounds like I don't know if they're able to make it, but K-State even want to go see him again this yeah, week. Yeah, they tried going to see him this week. I don't know if it worked out because of weather. But, yeah, it's a battle between Texas and K-State right now. Shaka Smart, he's been in to see him too. I, I haven't – he hasn't visited Texas yet. He hasn't planned to visit yet. He does want to go visit other places since visiting uh, – unofficially visiting K-State um, this past weekend. But um, – I mean, right now, I think K-State's in a great spot. Right. I mean, he, he seems like a guy who, who wants to come into a program that's, you know, going to uh, use his ability as a, a shot maker uh, and a defender. So that's what K-State wants. That's what they need. And it, it would add another 150 guy to this class, which is what they would want. But as far as the visit went, he loves K-State. He seems like uh, him and Lowry have a great relationship. Yeah. Weber gave him the offer at the, uh, uh, at the visit, and that was huge. And I mean, I know it does. It, him wearing a K State 
sweatshirt and t-shirt to me yeah. on his own without being given that or anything at well, the visit. Other kids haven't been doing that. Yeah, in basketball. exactly. In, basketball, in football, we see it all the time. Uh-huh. I can't even say that to you, but yep. you're right. In basketball, you think about it, the pictures you take, they're never wearing no. K-State stuff. So yeah. it, it seemed like him and his family had a great time. It's still also, you know, close to, he's from Nebraska. It's well, close that's what to I was Nebraska gonna as well. Gonna, yep. And you may have to speculate here, and you may just say, I don't know, uh-huh. Matt. But... Do you get the sense that that matters, you know, distance to him? I mean, he's from Lincoln. He was committed to Nebraska, uh-huh. of course, so it mattered at that point. And I guess I've just heard some rumbling that maybe it matters to him. And if it does, there's very few Power 5 programs closer to Lincoln than Kansas State. And it's certainly a lot closer than Austin, Texas. It is, it is speculation on my part, but it does seem to matter. Yeah, like you said, committed to Nebraska. And super, like, tight-knit family. You could just tell from meeting right. him, they his dad, and his them. mom. Yeah, yeah, the picture you can see on, on our website of them together. And, yeah, I, I do think that – very well could play a part and uh i mean also when you're talking about texas it's got the the question has to be raised too i mean i know it gets raised year after year because it's that program but how long is shaka going to be there with how poorly that program has been the past few years right a lot more stability even with bruce weber's you know age i think there's a lot more perceived stability manhattan one because you know his job is safe Uh two they've had more success than texas and then three you know, there's other guys in the staff who have a lot of ownership in this program, too. So, and I could, I yeah. could, there was one other visitor, unofficial visitor. Yep. Uh, I talked to him a little bit. He didn't have a bunch to say. You know, yeah. he had, he liked his visit. And I mean, West Virginia is the only other team that he but really Sekou pointed out. Gossima, is yep, that you're about? Yeah. Gossima, and good kid, really good kid. He, he's out of St. Louis. So obviously, great connection with him there. Um, and he's, I don't know exactly where he's from, but. Uh, He's staying with the host family in right. St. Louis right now. Yep. And then not recruiting, but, you know, Casey Eziagu was at yep. the game. Well, probably both games. Both I, games, yep. But uh, at least he, I just thought about that. At least we <laughs> did at see least, him. I, It just now struck me that that was his second game on the K-State bench was when he saw that action. So it's different, I guess, than at UTEP. Also, not I don't want to joke about it, but happy that he didn't get involved. I know. You didn't now, see him out there. Think about that. So, but, and it was by the closest to the K-State bench, oh, too. So all right. So good for him for not getting know, involved in yeah. that. But we saw him. You know, you saw him twice. I got a little video of him on Twitter just kind of standing around. Yep. You know, 6'10", 6'11", 7'1", wingspan that is what is listed at. It looks every bit of it. He's been engaged so far. We haven't had a chance to really talk with him yet. But I imagine at some point they'll make him available to the media. And Bruce will have a press conference that doesn't have so much... <laughs> To talk about, um, and we can ask some questions about about Casey. Oh yeah, He's yeah, talking. I know that is the funny thing. We haven't had a press conference since you know that we've been able to do it. But as soon as we can, we'll get his thoughts on it, and I'll put a little vid up on Twitter of just his thoughts on Casey too. I'm tired of hearing you really struggle through this, so I'm gonna go <laughs> ahead and call it into the show. I will say we're gonna make. I believe we're going to make a little oh, car, yeah. a little car ride in the coming days. Uh, the little little the confusing part is we're not going to Tuscaloosa though, so you nope. don't, we're not telling you where we're going, but we'll go somewhere. That would be for the site. Um, it would be good stuff. We're still going to go to a lot of K State road games this year. We've already been what Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas. Got yeah. us our hotels to Iowa State, yeah. Oklahoma State. We're going to we'll go, go to TCU. To TCU and that's, yeah. yeah, so we'll see. But um, we'll be somewhere else this week, and I think people will enjoy it. We'll enjoy, we'll enjoy it. it. It's yeah. going to be a great time. I mean, so Nat's over here. She laughed. I'm going to wrap it up. I appreciate Flando coming in here and working sick, um, all the work he does for it. If you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel and listen to us on YouTube, give that a hit for us, please. Or to case it online, we'll take yep. that subscription uh-huh. too because that lines our pockets. And <laughs> that is very, very helpful. So thanks to Tallgrass Tap House for hosting us. Thanks to Flando for his work. Thanks to the rest of our staff for all they do for us. And thanks to you for doing the one thing, the only thing we've ever asked you to do in the history of case it online. Tell those darn friends. Tell them.